Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, good morning uh, if you're on the uh, eastern seaboard of the of the U.S. Uh, good very early morning if you're on the Pacific seaboard. Um, good afternoon if you're in Europe, and uh, good evening. And thank you for staying up so late if you're in Asia. I see we've got lots of attendees from all around the world, and thank you very much for taking some time out of your this holiday period if you're celebrating uh, the Christmas and New Year holiday to listen to our webinar today. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about our uh, teak and development land opportunity in Costa Rica, and we're going to talk about avoiding the biggest mistake that an investor can make. Uh, we hold these webinars every second, uh, well, every Thursday, in fact, I'm sorry, and on the front page of our website, you will always find the uh, details of our forthcoming webinars. We do record the webinars as well and if you look on the uh, again on the front page of the webinar in the free downloads and media area you can see the recordings of previous webinars and our most uh, current webinars. Um, the Today, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about the biggest mistake that inv uh, an investor can make and how to avoid it. And this mistake uh, relates not only to Costa Rica, not only to real estate, not only to real estate in Costa Rica, but to all the gamut of investments that are out there. Now, I know that some of you on the line right now are saying, well, I'm not really an investor. I'm sort of thinking about having a home in Costa Rica. Um, and uh, I don't classify myself as an investor. But even if that is what your plans are, you should consider your home purchase in Costa Rica as an investment so that you maximize the return on it. If not for yourself, then as a legacy for your children or even for your children's children. Now, having said that, I'm very proud to offer you our current project, uh, an investment opportunity, which meet all the criteria that avoids this mistake that many investors make. It's suitable for pure investors, it's suitable for those who plan to have a home in Costa Rica, and it's suitable for those who wanted both, who want it all. Because in Nature Walk, you can have it all. Now, it is probably one of the most lucrative land investments that you're ever going to come across. It's a one-of-a-kind opportunity, and we're currently experiencing record sales, and we do have very limited inventory. Now, at the end of the call, I do have some news about our launch offer lots, which is strictly limited to those of you on this webinar today. We will have time for some questions at the end of the webinar, and I hope to have Tim Alexander uh, from PORG Group, our partners in this project and the developer of Nature Walk, on the line to help me answer some of those questions. For those of you who haven't attended a webinar before, if you look to the right-hand side of your screen, there's a little control panel or control box, and in that, you will find an area that you can type in any questions. Now, if anything, uh, any questions arise during the course of the webinar, feel free to type them in. We won't answer them then and there, but we will get to as many as possible uh, at the end of the webinar. Now, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, during the webinar, you're going to find out a lot more about Costa Rica, about real estate in Costa Rica, about real estate pur purchase and ownership in Costa Rica. We're going to talk about timber. Specifically, we're going to talk about teak. We're going to talk about the pitfalls to avoid in all those areas, real estate, purchase ownership, timber teak, and of course, we're going to talk about Nature Walk Turabaris. Now, our office in Canada, uh, for those of you who are located in Canada or in the United States, uh, relatively close to Canada, uh, is open, and it is in the Four Seasons Hotel Complex on Avenue Road in Toronto. Uh, Adam Sachs and Thomas Arato are the managing partners, and they'd be delighted to meet you at our office there and uh, show you more about Nature Walk if you're in the area. Now, I do know that several airlines have very steeply discounted fares from all sorts of locations around the world um, uh, to Canada at the moment, so it may be worth considering a little trip up there. Of course, if you have access to your own uh, private plane, uh, you could perhaps fly up and uh, enjoy some time in the office and in our showroom in the Four Seasons Hotel, com hotel Complex, and then perhaps take in a little skiing because they've had actually heavy snow over the last couple of weeks. Now, we do have a full display center there, and you can also see, in addition to uh, information about Nature Walk, uh, we, can, we have our Nature Walk jewelry, which is handmade in Costa Rica and specifically made for uh, Nature Walk, and our Nature Walk teak paper books. Again, they're handmade uh, in Costa Rica, specifically for Nature Walk and the Nature Walk brand, 
and indeed we even have some teak trees growing in the exhibition center. Now they are very small at the moment, but it gives you an idea of what a teak tree looks like. Better than that, Adam and Thomas have a healthy stock of Costa Rican coffee and they'd be delighted to uh, host a little coffee morning for you there. Um, now, one thing uh, that we do have coming up, and we have a number of them coming up uh, in uh, January. I notice we've got the 16th of December there, but of course that one is over. We have a number of Costa Rica information evenings. Uh, these evenings are purely informational. Uh, they run from 6.30 through to 8.30. We have a number of them available in um, January, and they've proved extremely popular with investors. If you visit the website www.explorecostarica.ca, you can see when the upcoming dates are, uh, pick one that suits you, and attend. Uh, as I mentioned, they're purely informational evenings. Um, we do provide some refreshment, and it gives people a really good idea about uh, Costa Rica, about land in Costa Rica, about property in Costa Rica, about how they should go around an investment in Costa Rica, and of course, what they should avoid uh, when, um, when, uh, when considering a, a property investment. Now, um, that's the website that you will go to if you uh, type in www.explorecostarica.ca and as I mentioned, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see lots more information about those there. Should you miss out uh, or be unable to get to our, uh, to our Canadian office, uh, we will have an office opening in HACO uh, over the coming months and we will have one of our teak homes on display there and we'll also have a sample yurt on display there. Now, Nature Walk is uh, suitable for people who want uh, purely to invest. We have investors who have purchased for themselves. We have invest investors who have purchased for family. We have investors who are pure investors and those who plan to have a home uh, in Costa Rica. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of investors from New York who traveled to Costa Rica specifically to invest in condos. They wanted to buy two condominiums. And our sales staff had been in contact with them and convinced them, twisted their arm, to come and see Nature Walk and see what they thought of it. Now, I think, in fact, we were probably number 12 on their list of 12 things to do whilst in Costa Rica. But we had got them some very competitive rates in a, in a hotel in Hako, and uh, eventually they were convinced, and they said they would come and have a look at Nature Walk. Now, when they came, uh, they were so enamored when they saw Nature Walk, and they saw its potential that they decided to invest in four lots. They abandoned their decision to invest in condos and they decided they would invest in four lots in Nature Walk. When they returned to the United States, they encountered some buyer's remorse. Now, buyer's remorse is where somebody invests in something and then they go away the next day and they wake up and go, my goodness, what have I done? But their buyer's remorse worked the other way. Instead of saying, my goodness, what have I done? They said, my goodness, why haven't we invested more? And they contacted us two days later and wanted to buy an additional five lots. Now, these guys are experienced investors, and we're not expecting everybody on the call today uh, to invest in nine lots. Of course we're not. But the question to ask is, why did they invest in so many lots when they initially came looking for two condos? Well, the condos were, were planned to be pure investment purchases. They plan to rent the condos out over time and benefit from the income, and then over time uh, benefit from the increase in price of the condos. Now, I don't know if any of you on the call today have investment rental property overseas, but the downsides are occupancy and continuing maintenance. Even if the condo is unoccupied, you earn nothing and you still got to maintain it. So why did they choose to invest in NatureWalk? Because it gave them the income that they were looking for, and the capital appreciation without the hassles of occupancy and the aggravation of maintenance. Now already we found that most of our investors are taking action and buying sight unseen to avoid the possibility of missing out on this uh, very unique opportunity. Uh, but like these guys, if you should plan to travel to Costa Rica, we would of course be delighted to see you there and uh, to show you the project. Just send us an email and we'll put Tracy from Everything Costa Rica uh, in contact with you. Tracy has the inside track on all the best hotels, the best rates, car hire, tours, travel, well, in a nutshell, everything Costa Rica. So if you send an email to info at costarica invest.ie, 
Or alternately, if you go to our website and you again look on the first page, in the services section, there's an area there for travel to Costa Rica. And if you click on that, you will go through to a little form here where you can fill out some details. And it has some suggestions there of things to do whilst you're in um, Costa Rica, of course, uh, that, that's just a very short list of suggestions. There are many, many other things that you can do whilst you're there. And of course, uh, as I mentioned, Tracy uh, is on hand to assist you with your travel arrangements. In addition, uh, starting uh, at the end of January, we will have some Explore uh, Costa Rica tours coming up. Now, these tours are specifically aimed at investors who have a plan to invest in Costa Rica, but are not sure where they want to invest. Now, the, these tours are based around the Pacific uh, region, the Central Pacific region, and they include all accommodation, all meals, a luxury accommodation, I hasten to add, in a beautiful villa, all meals, transport, and each day you'll be brought to a different area of the Central Pacific region and shown uh, what that area is like, what the benefits are, what the downsides are. Um, for some people, some people are looking for a touristy area with lots of facilities. Some people are looking to get out into the countryside. So for the person uh, who's looking for the touristy area, they don't want to be in the countryside, and that's a disadvantage for them. For the person who wants the touristy area, they don't want to be in the countryside, so being in the country is a dis disadvantage for them. So it really gives you a very good insight into Costa Rica and some of the opportunities that are there. And again, if you're interested in uh, one of those Explore Costa Rica tours, just send an email to info at costaricainvest.ie and we'll be delighted again to put you in contact with Tracy who will uh, assist you in those arrangements. Now, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is James Cahill. I'm an expert at investing in Costa Rica. We've been involved in ecological hybrid investment and development opportunities for the past four years. The companies that we choose to work with have a very high level of success. We're sticklers for details, and we always do a very thorough due diligence before we agree to work with or represent any company or project. The criteria when we choose a project to work with are that they are development land-based projects which we combine with agricultural commodities. They have to be green and eco-friendly and sustainable. We only work with high-quality, reputable com companies with a strong record who we enjoy working with. Now, we are particularly fond of opportunities which allow smaller investors to get involved. Um, and uh, I'm delighted to say that in NatureWalk, uh, the developer of NatureWalk is PRG Group. And because of PRG Group's uh, home building arm, their teak milling arm, and their rental pool, it does really provide a complete opportunity for the smaller right through to the very largest investor. Today, uh, just before I started the webinar, I was looking through some paperwork from the Boston Institute of Retirement Research, and I'm afraid to say it didn't make very happy reading. There are a number of myths out there uh, that people are, uh, believe, and unfortunately, they're not true. The first myth is that many people believe that they're going to have uh, enough to meet um, the, will have enough resources to meet their retirement needs when they retire. Unfortunately, uh, research from the Boston Institute for Retirement Research shows that the reality is that almost 45% of working age households are at risk of failing to meet this simple objective. Many people believe that younger workers are better prepared for retirement or will be better prepared for retirement than the baby boomers. But again, it's not true. The reality is that younger workers are more vulnerable with nearly 50% of those households at risk. Many people think that... Uh, Social Security will replace a significant amount of their income going forward. It currently replaces about 42%. But the reality is that net Social Security replacement rates will drop to 30% by 2030, adjusting for rising normal retirement age, taxation benefits, and higher Medicare premiums. Many people believe that 401ks and IRAs have allowed workers to save significant amounts for retirement. Unfortunately, again, the Boston Institute has proved that it's not true. The typical household age head approaching retirement has only 60,000 saved in their 401ks and IRA accounts. And unfortunately, that translates into about $400 a month on retirement. People believe that if they save as much relative income to their parents, then their retirement will be secure. Again, unfortunately, it's not true. 
current workers must save more because of the demise of traditional pensions, rising longevity, soaring health care costs, and falling asset returns. Many people plan to rely on the equity in their house to finance their retirement, but the truth is that retirees still need somewhere to live. And the Boston Center for Retirement Research estimates that only 45% of the equity in a house will be available on retirement. Now, we've all discovered to our cost that many of the traditional investment opportunities that we invested in have proved lacking. And indeed, some of those people that we put our trust in have proved similarly lacking. I know I've certainly discovered this to my cost, and those bank shares that I invested in in Ireland do not look uh, very attractive right now. Because the bottom line is that no investment advisor cares as much about your money as you do, or is as engaged at making it grow. But if you had access to an investment which combines the following asset classes, the first of which doubles in value every 10 years, the second has outperformed inflation by, on average, 3.3% per annum over the last 100 years. And this same asset, the UN, estimates that the demand for the asset will increase by 60% over the next 25 years. The next asset can multiply by 100% per year, depending on circumstance. And the final asset was worth nothing years ago and could be the most valuable part of this combination hybrid investment. It was worth nothing years ago. And currently, this uh, asset class is uh, being traded for hundreds of billions of dollars every year. Even better, these are real assets. They're not pieces of paper. They're in your name, and they're guaranteed by Chicago Title. So if you were able to take charge of your future and invest in these real assets, would they be of interest? Well, what am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Nature Walk Tarabares. It's an offering of land, teak forestry, development use, and ecological advantages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this investment down into its individual parts. We're going to discuss them individually, and then we're going to bring it all together at the end. So let me tell you a little bit about Nature Walk. It's a teak plantation of just under 100 hectares. It has an excellent location. It's about 30 minutes drive from Hako, and it overlooks the ocean. In fact, the views extend all the way from Caldera right down the coast to Manuel Antonio National Park. And because of its location in the hills, there's a constant cooling breeze. And you're far enough away from the hustle and bustle that all you can hear are the birds singing, the monkeys in the trees, and the wind rustling through the branches of your teak trees. The Auto Route del Sol from San Jose to Caldera has opened three months ago, and this is effectively half the driving time from San Jose to Hako. As I mentioned, it's a teak plantation, and the teak will be ready for harvesting in seven years. The plantation has been divided into lots of 1,000 square meters, which is about a quarter of an acre, and upwards. And investors own both the teak and the land. Each lot comes with permission to put one house on it, and each lot will be fully serviced with water, electricity, and road access. At harvest, the returns from the teak should cover the cost of the purchase of the land at um, in the launch offer lots. Now, Nature Walk borders the Pavona Ranch Project, and this is a great location because the Pavona Ranch Project has a commercial aspect to it, with shops, hotels, and restaurants planned. I mentioned that there are teak trees growing on these lots, and if you plan a home for yourself, you could harvest some of the trees right now and build right away. Meanwhile, the other trees will continue to grow. Alternately, you can wait until the, tea, the trees are mature and ready for harvest, which is in seven years' time. Then after harvest, uh, the choice is yours. Do you want to build on the land yourself? Do you simply want to sell the land on? Perhaps you want to replant more trees. Or perhaps you don't want to harvest the teak at 20 years of age. Perhaps you have a longer-term plan. Perhaps you don't need the return in seven years, but maybe 10 years would suit you better. Well, the good news is that the teak will continue to grow and become even more valuable. An important aspect of the development is that PRG Global Realty have a timber home building arm called Tropical Teak Homes. Tropical Teak Homes will build homes in Nature Walk, and PRG have uh, plans to establish a teak mill close by specifically to process the teak for their timber homes, and that teak mill is already underway. As an owner in Nature Walk, this has two advantages. It gives you a guaranteed market, lower harvesting costs, 
and more importantly, higher prices. So let's break down those individual aspects of Nature Walk. Now, I know many of you on the call already are very familiar with Costa Rica, but a little bit of background. Where is it? Well, it's in Central America. It's the oldest democracy in Central and Southern America, and it has more teachers than policemen. It has a literacy rate of 96%, and this year they will spend more than 25% of their entire national budget on education. It has a fantastic climate, and people in Costa Rica live longer than most other places in the Western Hemisphere, living an average of 79 years of age. Now, Costa Rica contains over 5% of the world's biodiversity, and it's the country that practically invented ecotourism, and it ranks really highly in a number of polls. They're now ranked third in the world in terms of environmental performance. Two years ago, they were ranked fifth in the world. They're improving all the time, and they plan to be number one. And that study is carried out every two years by Yale University. Costa Rica is ranked number one in the world on the Happy Planet Index. And that study is carried out by the NEF group. And what that compares is the happiness of a nation in comparison to the ecological damage that they do to, to, to get that happiness. Costa Rica is by far and away number one. So they're very happy people, and they do very little damage uh, to, the, uh, to the ecology. Costa Rica is the seventh most politically and socially stable country in the world, and that's according to the Economist Intelligence Unit. And that's a fact that often staggers people when you tell them that the seventh most politically and socially stable country in the world is located in Central America. People quite simply don't believe it, but it's true, and that country is Costa Rica. Costa Rica is the most prosperous country in Latin America, and that study is carried out by the Legatum Prosperity Index. Costa Rica has preserved more than 25% of its surface area as natural park and forest reserve never to be developed, and they plan to be carbon neutral as a nation by 2021. More than 95% of their energy requirements come from renewable resources, and it's an amazing story how they achieve that. Twenty years ago, the Costa Rican government realized that there were two areas of government in conflict, the Department of Energy and the Department of the Environment. The Department of Energy wanted cheap energy, and that often came at a significant cost to the environment. So 20 years ago, they decided to put one minister in charge of both. And as a result of that decision, they took a 50-year view on their energy requirements, and they invested hugely in hydroelectric, wind, and geothermal power. At the time, other countries thought they were crazy. Oil was cheap, and these technologies were expensive. Now, 20 years later, Costa Rica produces 95% of its energy from these renewable resources, and other countries look to Costa Rica and the inspired decisions that they made 20 years ago. So Costa Rica may be a small country, but it's got very big goals. They plan, as I mentioned, to be carbon neutral by 2021, and they plan to achieve this by various channels one of which is planting more trees. And last year, they planted 7 million trees, which is more per head of population than anywhere else in the world. Now, to achieve this carbon neutrality, they're going to have to plant more trees and preserve more land, and that's going to push up the value of existing development land. Nature Walk, of course, combines development land plus trees, and so this ties in beautifully with the Costa Rican government plans. Now, Costa Rica is a very attractive tourist destination. And the tourism industry is worth over $2 billion per year to Costa Rica, and they intend to grow that further. For the first three months of this year, tourism was up 11.5% compared to the same three months of last year, and they had 65,800 more visitors. But Costa Rica is not just interested in the one-off visitor. They want people to come again and again, and preferably own a home in Costa Rica. And so to do this, they've made the process of emigrating to Costa Rica very straightforward. And you and I have exactly the same land and property ownership rights as a Costa Rican citizen, and that's enshrined in the Constitution. More than 1% of the population is already American expatriates and retirees. And why are they looking to Costa Rica? Well, they're looking to Costa Rica because they're looking for a lower cost of living, safety, security, and great health care, and also a fantastic climate. The cost of living in Costa Rica is about 50% of the cost of living in the USA. Health care is about a tenth of the price. Imagine living in a beautiful climate, in a safe place, with great health care, for a fraction 
of your current cost of living. But Costa Rica is also looking elsewhere to generate revenue, and it's looking to high-tech industry, a combination of lucrative tax breaks, a highly educated workforce, and low labor costs has successfully attracted many, many multinationals. And you can see just some of them there. All of these country, all of them, I beg your pardon, all of these companies have their Central and Southern American headquarters in Costa Rica. So Costa Rica is very business friendly. They've got huge eco aspirations. It's stable, it's safe, with excellent health care. Let's dig into the economy of Costa Rica a little more. Now, was Costa Rica affected by the recent global economic crisis? Well, yes, of course it was. But it was more of a knock-on than a direct effect. But Costa Rica, as they always do, they prepared. And they put IMF funding in place should they need it. In fact, they never needed to use it, but they, they had that plan in place. Now, the IMF have been monitoring Costa Rica, and here's what they said at the start of the month of May. Marco Pinon, the IMF mission chief for Costa Rica, visited the country during the second week of April to conduct the third and final review of the IMF's 735 million standby arrangement with the Costa Rican government. A line of credit approved by the agency in April 2009 to support the country's strategy to cope with the adverse global economic environment. During his visit, he said that thanks to strong financial and business resurgence in the first few months of the year, the Costa Rican economy stands in good shape for 2010 and that economic recovery in Costa Rica is firmly underway. Economic growth rose in the second half of 2009 and remained strong in the first quarter of 2010. Consumer and business sentiment have firmed up and financial conditions have continued to improve. The government strategy to shield the economy from external shocks with IMF funds, which in the event were not used, have preserved confidence, maintained stability and protect the most vulnerable groups. A supportive fiscal policy has provided a boost uh, to the recovery and a cautious monetary policy has allowed inflation to move to low levels. Very positive words from the IMF. And the value of exports from Costa Rica has risen by 16.8% in the first quarter of this year. And here is Reuters uh, opinion or view and as you can see they're saying uh, that uh, the Costa Rican economy will grow 4.5% in 2010 and they're predicting 5% in 2011. Okay, let's talk a little bit about land in Costa Rica. Now, Costa Rican land prices have seen spectacular rises over the past number of years. And in some areas, it's not gone up by hundreds, but it's gone up by thousands of percent. Now, there are two big drivers which are going to affect land prices in the short to medium term. The first of which is baby boomer retirees. Over 100 million baby boomers are going to retire over the next decade. Now, some estimates suggest that 10 to 20 percent of them would seek to retire abroad or have spent a significant amount of time abroad. Now, when they look to retire abroad, what are they going to look for? Well, they're going to look for safety, good climate, quality health care, and a lower cost of living. Costa Rica ticks all of these boxes. Now, of course, Costa Rica couldn't possibly take between 10 and 20 million retirees. It only has a population of 4 million right now. But a significant portion will look to Costa Rica because it ticks all of the right boxes for them. And remember, it's very easy to emigrate to Costa Rica. Already, more than 1% of the population is American expatriates and retirees. It's very popular amongst uh, American uh, celebrities and Costa Rica is getting constant coverage on the television and as a result many many Americans uh, are very familiar with Costa Rica and plan to have their retirement home there. The second big driver for land price growth is Costa Rica's eco plans. Do you remember that I mentioned that they plan to be carbon neutral as a nation by 2021? More than 25 percent of the surface area is already zoned as natural park and forest reserve never to be developed. But the aspiration to be carbon neutral means that they're going to have to preserve more land and plant more trees. And if you Google uh, recent news stories, you will see that the Costa Rican government announced about three weeks ago that they had sourced funding to preserve a further 1% of their surface area, raising it from 25 to 26%. And that process is going to continue. They are going to preserve more land. So what does this mean? Well, ultimately, what it means is that uh, the 
demand for land is increasing with retiring baby boomers and the supply is decreasing and that means prices are going only one way and that's up. Right, let's move on and talk a little bit about timber. Timber has been traded for hundreds of years and in fact timber is the best performing asset class of the last 30 years when you compare the S&P Global Timber and Forestry Index to all the other asset class indices. On average, over the past 100 years, timber has outperformed inflation by 3.3%. That's over the past 100 years, it has outperformed inflation by 3.3%. And that uh, figure comes from a study by Cogent Partners called Unique by Nature, Timber Investments in a Global Economy. So timber is a solid, if not spectacular, performance. Uh, as performer. But I think we've all learned our lessons when it comes to spectacular investments. I know I certainly have. And the lesson I've learned is that what can go up spectacularly seems to come down even more spectacularly. But timber has some fantastic aspects to, his, to it as an investment. The first of which is the simple fact that timber grows. The simple biological fact that timber grows. If I can put it to you this way, if you decided that oil prices were going to rise over the next 10 years, and you went out and you bought a barrel of oil for $100, and you decided to sell it in 10 years, and the price had gone to $200, well, happy days. You bought it for $100, 10 years later you sell it for $200, you've made $100. Of course, it works the other way too. If you buy it for $100 and in 10 years the price has fallen to $90, you sell it, and you've actually lost $10. But timber is different because it grows. It's the equivalent of planting your barrel of oil in the ground and 10 years later when you come to sell it, you have, it has grown into two barrels of oil and the price has risen, so you win two ways. In a study by Forest Investment Associates called the Illustrative Drivers of Timberland Returns, they showed that over 60% of the return from a timber investment is the pure biological factor that it grows. The second important factor about timber as an investment is that it's not a perishable asset. With most other agricultural commodities, when they're ready to harvest, you've got to harvest them, and you take whatever price is available on the day. But with timber, if the prices doesn't, don't suit, you can let the trees grow on. And when the price suits you better, you can harvest them, and the better news is the trees have got bigger in the meanwhile. So you're not limited to harvesting these trees in Nature Walk in seven years. If you have a child starting college in 10 years, or 12 years, or 15 years, you can let the teak grow and harvest it then. It's not a perishable commodity. You will have seen from some earlier slides uh, that the UN Food and Agriculture Organization is predicting that demand for timber will rise by 60% over the next um, 25 years. And that number comes from their forest resource assessment, resource assessment paper, which they publish every year. Now, timber is a good uh, performer, but teak is even better. Teak is an expensive tropical hardwood and currently more than 90% of the world's teak comes from jungle sources. 90% comes from jungle sources. Less than 10% is coming from sustainable plantations. Well, how expensive is teak? Well, here's a price list from a, from a lumber mill. Uh, now, I got it about uh, six, eight weeks ago. And you can see I've picked out some prices. It's a little difficult to see on the screen, but I've actually picked out the prices there. Um, and so a board foot of cherry wood is $6.85. Now, mahogany, many people regard mahogany as a very expensive timber. It's $12.30. Pine, a common timber, $4.75 uh, per board foot. Teak is $28.75 a board foot. It puts it in perspective. Teak is a very expensive tropical hardwood. Now, world opinion is moving against us harvesting our jungles. Remember, more than 90% of that teak is coming from jungles, and world opinion is moving against that. And less and less teak is coming to the market. In April 2010, Australia proposed to make the import, trade-in, sale, or sale of jungle timber a criminal offence. Now, Australia has a population of 22 million people, so you might say, well, you know, that's, that's not so important. But in May of this year, um, the issue came to the table in the European Union and it looks like they're going to implement a similar ban and similar criminal offences. Now that's much different because of course the population of the European Union is 501 million people. Meanwhile, 
the demand for teak is rising because demand is, is for timber rises in simple direct relation to world population growth. The more people there are in the world, the more demand there is for timber. The demand for teak in particular is rising, and the reason for very strong demand increases in, in, for teak is that the two largest markets for teak right now are in India and China. And as we all know, these economies are growing super fast right now. So what have we got happening here? We have reducing supply and increasing demand, and that leads only one way, and that's increasing prices. This is just a slide I've put up here. It illustrates that demand for teak into the USA has gone up by 100% in the first quarter of this year. Now, I'm delighted, and I hope uh, we have him on the line. Uh, I had mentioned that we have four aspects to this investment. Land, development use, teak, and ecological advantages. And Tim Alexander from PRG is on the line right now, and uh, Tim is going to describe some of the ecological aspects of Nature Walk and how important they are to the project as a whole. Hi, Tim. Are you there? Hi, hi James. How are you today? Great. Thank you very much. And how's the weather in Costa Rica? It's a beautiful sunny day, and it's uh, absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Great. Beautiful day here. Great. I'm well, uh, broadcasting today from my... Uh, a home in San Jose, Costa Rica, so I'm up in the Central Highlands area. It's a very temperate area, so it's um, be uh, beautiful sunshine and also a very temperate climate up here. Wonderful. Well, Tim, I can tell you we've got a lot of people from Europe on the on the call today, um, so they're probably very jealous because we've had a lot of snow. So, <laughs> so Tim, you can you take us through the, the ecological aspects of Nature Walk and tell us a little bit about that? Sure, James, as you've uh, mentioned, the uh, ecological aspect of Nature Walk is, is very important to us. In fact, we built our development model around our ecological commitment in Nature Walk. And uh, here's some of the highlights of it. Uh, with regard to the property, it's about um, 240 acres, or for, for people in the metric system, it's about 97 hectares. So it's a large piece of property, and we're leaving over 20% of it uh, in natural preserve, not to be touched. Nature Walk has a variety of, of beautiful features to it, and, and really the, the name Nature Walk comes from the fact that we plan a trail system in these areas that are not going to be touched. And uh, any one point you can pass by trees that you can't uh, put two arms around. You know, they're huge um, natural uh, wonders. We have streams that turn into rivers. We have beautiful waterfalls that, that uh, fall 100 meters. And so um, this 20% of the overall area is very important to us. And that, uh, and that it uh, remain and be uh, maintained in a, in a manner uh, of its natural state. We also have um, what we call our ecological easement. And, and essentially what that is, is it's uh, a requirement of all the developable property in Nature Walk to have at least 50% uh, of it planted at all times with a tree uh, kind of product. Now, you may cut down your teak and decide not to regrow it, but you may grow another uh, type of, of uh, wood or forestry product. That's okay. Um, as long as 50% of your, your total area remains in a, 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 a vegetative um, component. And that's very important to us. Uh, at Nature Walk as well. In addition, we're promoting conservation and eco-friendly practices throughout the project. This, uh, some examples of this are uh, sanitation, garbage collection, conser uh, conservation practices, uh, and and all of those are bundled into what we call eco-friendly practices uh, in Nature Walk, and and we're promoting those and uh, enhancing the use of those throughout the project. The last one is quite unique and and we're very proud of it because it ties into Coach Costa Rica's idea of becoming carbon neutral in 2021 and that's our off-site off uh, tree planting initiative. What we're doing for every lot that we sell, we're planting 500 trees, five to 600 trees 
uh, new trees off-site. And that way, we're increasing the stock of trees from Nature Walk and taking away any um, component that might be cut for development. So those, in essence, James, are, are, uh, are the highlights of our ecological commitment. And, and we really think that this is going to add value to the project. Great. Thank you for that, Tim. And uh, Tim, perhaps you might tell us a little bit about uh, the uh, carbon footprint of an investor in NatureWalk and how that is actually offset by an investment in NatureWalk. Sure. Uh, James, everyone is looking for um, a personal means of, of doing something for the planet and, and the ecology and, and can relate to this on a personal basis. So uh, essentially we put up this slide so we can show people by buying in Nature Walk, you can actually do something personally to offset your carbon footprint. So in the case of uh, someone buying a three lot package, um, a six person family can totally offset their carbon footprint on an annual basis. So they become carbon neutral. That means the the uh, car produced by their activities uh, in, say, North America or Europe uh, can be totally offset with the carbon um, carbon dioxide sequestration uh, in Nature Walk. It's the same uh, on one lot. A three-person family can do the same thing annual basis. And, and, I, and I have to emphasize this is an ongoing a contribution. This is not a one-time, but this happens annually uh, every year. So, and the final one, we have a $5,000 titled interest. Um, for a, for a one-person investing in a titled interest, uh, they can offset two tons of a carbon per year. That's a, uh, approximately one-third of their, of their total output. So that, in essence, James, is the, uh, is the carbon uh, neutral footprint with an investment in Nature Walk. Great. Thank you very much for that, Tim. And uh, Tim will be staying on the line as well to take any questions at the, uh, at the end of the call. So if you have any questions that come to mind, don't forget in your control panel on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, you can type in those questions and we will get to as many as we, as we can at the, at the end of the webinar. So thank you very much for that, Tim. So let's talk about some of the investment dynamics at play here. Uh, Nature Walk is very different uh, for most people. It's a significant um, diversification for most people's investment portfolio. It adds in the real assets of land and tea. Now, uh, in a land investment or a development land investment, uh, you become what is known as a land banker. Um, and land bankers, what they do is that they purchase land on the basis that changes will take place that drive the land price upwards. Some of the changes that might take place include rezoning, adjacent development, the simple passage of time. All of these things affect land prices. When the price goes up, you sell the land and you take your profit. But in Nature Walk, you have the advantage of the land, but it has this valuable commodity, teak, growing on it. If you plan to have a home in Costa Rica and you plan to build it from scratch, what you might do, you might go out and you buy a piece of land and then over time you will build your home on it and meanwhile the land will have earned you nothing and of course your home will have earned you nothing. But in Nature Walk it's different. You can buy that piece of land. If you plan to build sooner, you can harvest some of the teak right now and meanwhile the rest of that valuable commodity teak is growing on your land. And of course, the great thing about teak is that it doesn't know about banking crisis or global downturns. It just continues to grow. So the teak is acting as a hedge uh, on your increasing land prices. Now, I believe that price, land prices are going to grow strongly in good locations in Costa Rica in the short to medium term, driven by those large twin drivers of demand from expatriates and retirees looking for cheaper living with great weather, good health care in a safe, secure country, and Costa Rica ticks all of those boxes. The other driver that I mentioned was Costa Rica's aim to be carbon neutral by 2021, and the fact that they're having to zone more land as natural park and forest reserve, and that's going to drive development land prices upwards. In regard to teak, the trends against illegal jungle logging are reducing available teak, and simple population growth is increasing demand, so teak prices are rising. 
With the launch offer lots in Nature Walk, the return from the teak using very conservative pr pricing will cover the cost of the purchase of the land, and the land in a great location effectively becomes a free bet. Now, Nature Walk is the ideal combination between ecological and economic location. The Auto Route del Sol, which runs from San Jose to Jaco, has really opened up this area. It's much, much more accessible. And improved local access is one of the vital local factors that affects development land prices. Whilst people in their minds may say, oh, I want to live away from it all, I want to live in the, you know, way out in the countryside, the reality of that is, is not so nice. When you live a, you know, a two-hour drive from the nearest uh, population center, that can wear thin after a while. It's a very small number of the population who want that degree of remoteness. But Nature Walk is different. It's only 30 minutes from Hako. It's in the hills. It feels remote, but it's, again, right beside the Pavona Ranch Project. Again, a vital local factor. That's a vital local factor which will affect land prices. Let's move on to some projections here. Let's talk about how you can get involved in uh, Nature Walk. Now, our entry-level investment uh, we developed in response to demand. It's a titled share program, and each share costs $5,000. And basically, what happened was a number of investors came to us and said, you know, we really like Nature Walk. We, we love the teak. We love the land. We love the location. We like it. We want to get involved. But, you know, the entry-level for an individual lot is just a little too high for us. And so what we did was we created an entry-level investment program. Um, in this one, smaller investors uh, can buy shares in individual lots. Their shareholding is guaranteed by Chicago Title. And the lot that they buy a share in will be sold in three, five, or eight years. It's a very simple hands-off investment, and each share costs $5,000. And there's a projected target return of between 18 and 23% per annum, depending on the term of investment that you opt for. And with each of these options, you receive an income of a 10% dividend for the first three years of your investment. And that dividend is financed or paid for by teak thinnings from elsewhere in the plantation. And even better, every share that you subscribe to will reduce your carbon footprint by approximately two tons per annum. And for an, for an average person, um, their, their carbon footprint is about six tons per annum. So that's about a third of your carbon footprint. Now, our five-year shares, unfortunately, are fully subscribed at this point, so we have some three-year shares and some eight-year shares remaining, but our five-year option is fully, uh, fully uh, subscribed. Let's talk about our, our launch offer lots, because I do have some news about these launch offer lots. These were fully subscribed, but we have three lots that have been released back to the market by PRG, uh, they had reserved some of the lots themselves, and they've released three uh, of their reserve lots to the market. Now, these lots are priced at 50% of the proposed retail pricing of the rest of the estate. There's a minimum investment of $50,000, and you will receive a 10% dividend per annum for the first three years. And again, as with the title share program, that is financed by teak thinnings from elsewhere in the plantation. Now, the three specific lots that are available cost in total 64,000 uh, US dollars. Uh, there are two Valley View lots priced at 19,500 each and one Sea View lot priced at $25,000. And I've prepared a projection uh, uh, on the basis of one lot being sold in four years and the remaining lots plus their teak being sold in, in, in at eight years. For the basis of this projection, I have assumed that the investor has borrowed 100% of the purchase price at 8% over five years. And I'm assuming that the capital borrowed is repaid from the sale of the first lot in year four or year four and a half. Now the returns consist uh, the developer dividend, which is 10% per annum for the first three years. And I've assumed land appreciation of 7.5% per annum. And I'm assuming a milled teak value of $1,000 per cubic meter. Now these are all very conservative numbers. And to put that in perspective, the current price of milled teak in Costa Rica is 1,250 US dollars per cubic meter, and the current price of milled teak in uh, the USA is 1,750 dollars per cubic meter. Now, of course, there are uh, some losses in the milling process uh, because you're turning round logs, 
into rectangular planks. And uh, there are some harvesting costs. So we've assumed $1,000 per cubic meter in seven years' time. Given that the, the uh, teak price is currently 1250 per cubic meter, we think that's extremely conservative, especially when you consider the twin drivers of increasing demand and reducing supply for teak. So how do these figures look in reality? What does this in reality mean if you invested in these three lots? How would this work for you? Well, for years one, two, and three, you would receive a dividend of um, six thousand uh, five hundred, sorry, six thousand four hundred ten uh, percent um, per annum for the first three years. In year four, we've assumed the sale of one of the lots, and for the purposes of this, I've assumed that you're selling the Sea View lot. That, in fact, repays your entire original investment in year four. So now you've got two lots remaining with the teak growing on them that are effectively a free bet. Now, I never, used to, I never like to use the term bet when it comes to investment, but effectively, that's what you've got at this time. You've got your capital back, and now you have two lots in a beautiful location uh, with teak growing on them. Ultimately, in year uh, eight, if you harvest the teak and sell the two lots, that would bring you a total return of 214,620 US dollars. And remember, your capital was repaid back to you in year four. Now, as I mentioned, we have three of those lots remaining. If you are interested in those three lots, uh, simply send an email to info, I-N-F-O, at CostaRicaInvest.ie. Um, please indicate your name. Uh, and give us a phone number that we, we can contact you on, and those lots are available on a first-come, first-served basis. Uh, so whoever sends in the first email, we will contact them first and provide them with the detail they, they need to make a decision, and then we will work down through the list. Okay, our Phase 2 lots are our Pavona's uh, lots. Uh, these lots overlook the Pavona Ranch development and they are beautifully located lots. Each lot is about 12,000 square feet. Well, it is exactly 12,000 square feet, which is about 1,150 square meters. 1,150 square meters. These lots have beautiful 13-year-old teak growing, growing on them, and they overlook the Pavona's ranch development. These lots are available for $35,000 each, or if you want to do invest in two lots, you can invest in two lots for $60,000. Uh, these lots do not have the dividend uh, that is payable on the phase one lots. So I guess the question that many people ask me then is, well, you know, how much are similar lots to these in the area? Similar lots of 1,000 uh, to 1,100 square meters, fully serviced with water, electricity, and road access, but without teak, are typically on sale in this area for between forty and $60,000, but that is without teak. The question then becomes, how much will the teak be worth on each of these lots? Well, as a round number, about $23,000. And the calculation on that is, is very straightforward. Uh, the, a teak plantation in Costa Rica typically produces between 240 and 400 cubic meters per hectare at 20 years of age. Now, for Nature Walk, we're being super conservative, and we're predicting uh, a yield of 280. So remember, the range is 240 to 400. We're predicting a yield of 280. So 1,000 square meters will produce 28 cubic meters. These, of course, are 1,100 uh, square meters, which means that they will produce uh, over 30 uh, cubic meters of teak. And remember, the sale price of teak at the moment is 1,250. Well, multiply it out, and then assume that uh, we're going to lose 40% in the milling process and uh, in harvesting costs, and that gives us a return of about $23,000. So in seven years' time, if you invested in one of the uh, Pavona's ranch lots, uh, the Teak will certainly have made a significant contribution to the cost of purchase of the land. Won't quite have covered it, but it will make a significant contrib contribution. Of course, in the launch offer lots, it will actually cover the uh, entire uh, purchase price. Okay, so how do you get involved? Well, for the launch offer lots, as I mentioned, we have very limited uh, availability. Just simply send an email to info at costaricainvest.ie. Please include your name 
and a phone number that we can contact you on. The process for investing in a Pavona Ranch lot and the launch offer lots is similar. Uh, you select the plots that you're interested in. It's a 15% reservation deposit. There's 15% further uh, on signing the contract. The reservation deposit, I hasten to add, is fully refundable, less a $250 uh, contract fee. So it's fully refundable, less a $250 contract fee. Um, and then there's 15% further available on, uh, to be uh, deposited on signing the contract. And the balance is not due until the title has been transferred to your name. Now, currently, uh, we're estimating that that's going to be in March of next year. Uh, so, approximately March of next year. So, it's 15% now, 15% on signature of contract, which is within 15 days, and then the balance when the, uh, when the title is transferred. Okay. So, one of the areas uh, that, of course, I, I had uh, mentioned was how to avoid the biggest mistake that most investors make. And uh, I think many of you have probably figured out uh, what the big in, uh, mistake that most investors make. And the big mistake is quite simply this, that they enter into inflexible investments. They enter into an investment which only has one way out. And the problem with that is that it provides no flexibility when it comes to exiting the investment. It's very important when you enter an investment that you consider your exit strategies. And the more flexible the investment is, the more exit strategies you have. Remember, in Nature Walk, you have land. It's got development use. It's got teak growing on it. And it's got ecological advantages. So there are all sorts of options to you there. You could sell as per my my um, projection. You could sell one of the lots early and keep two remaining lots. You could uh, harvest some of the teak and build on your lot right now. You could harvest all of the teak uh, when it's ready for harvest in seven years' time. You can leave the teak on the land to grow longer. There are all sorts of combinations and options to suit your needs. So, if you're seriously interested in Nature Walk, I do strongly advise you to have a look at those launch offer lots, those remaining launch offer lots, and I would strongly advise you to send an email and get on that list. Now, this opportunity may be suitable for you, it may suit your investment needs, or it may not be for you, but it could be for a friend or a neighbor or a colleague, and they'd be extremely grateful uh, if you highlighted this investment opportunity to them. And again, if uh, the, your friend or your neighbor or your colleague uh, would send an email to us, info at CostaRicaInvest.ie, and of course we will respond straight away and send them the detail that they need to make uh, a decision. Okay, let's move on and uh, see if we have some questions. And uh, let me just bring up my question uh, box uh, here, yes, and I can see there are a number of questions here. So uh, I would just make uh, Tim Alexander from PRG uh, live. Uh, hi, Tim. Hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. Okay, Tim seems to have uh, gone off. Hi, James. Oh, hi, Tim. Hi, hi. how are you? Sorry. Hi, sorry. Sh short delay there. <laughs> sorry about that. Yep. Tim, we have, a, we have a number of uh, questions in, and uh, we would just run through some of them. I am conscious that we've, we've run slightly over on time here, so we, we will just uh, cover some of the questions. Um, one, one of the questions that we have here is, why do we believe that land prices in this area will rise? And I, that's a very good question, because when it comes to investing in land, the factors, you have general factors, the sort of large demographics that drive land prices, but in fact, it's the local factors that affect the price of your, uh, your specific land. When it comes to investing land, it is location, location, location. So, Tim, can I throw that question to you? Why do we believe that land in this area will rise in value? Uh, sure, James, not a problem. The, um, the larger factors that you, you referred to uh, are uh, in evidence in this whole, what we call the Central Pacific region. Um, first of all, the, the Central Pacific region is uh, the most active area f from a, a tourist development standpoint in Costa Rica, and it's the one that was uh, developed first. It's the one that's closest to the, the main international airport uh, in San Jose, 
and recently it's received uh, a couple of major boosts by infrastructure improvements. The principal one being the, the new road from San Jose to the beach, which cuts the time uh, to travel to this central Pacific area by about half. So where it was taking a, a, an hour and a half to get to the beach, it's now 45 minutes. And, and this means a lot in terms of uh, the potential, the continued potential of this area and the choice of many people, many tourists, to buy in this area rather than go to other areas which are, are not as accessible. Um, there's also a new, uh, in, the, in the Central Pacific, there's a, there's a, a brand new marina that's opened up um, really in the last month. But, uh, and this is a major infrastructure improvement and, a, and an anchor to the whole Central Pacific Coast. It really means a tremendous amount. It's the largest um, marina um, south of um, Cabo San Lucas, basically, uh, on, the, on the Pacific Coast. It also has uh, the largest uh, marine um, maintenance facilities. So these are the kinds of uh, infrastructure improvements that uh, spur development, and development spurs land price increase. Land becomes uh, more in demand, there's less of it, and, and as a result, land prices go up. And um, you might have mentioned earlier in the in the webinar, James, that we've seen land prices in Costa Rica on average go up over the last five years at, at about 20%. That's kind of slackened off, uh, but now is on the rise again. So uh, these are some of the macro features. As far as the, the individual uh, or local features that uh, affect Nature Walk, it's really the pressure of, of the development of the beach areas that are pushing outward that are causing land prices to rise. Nature Walk is on uh, what we call the uh, secondary government highway. And so th this particular roadway is slated for ongoing improvements over the next five years. They're supposed to actually uh, starting th uh, this dry season, which is now. So essentially, this road is intended to take the congestion uh, in traffic off of the main beach highway and, and uh, circulate uh, past the congested areas of Haco, Aradura. Well, uh, an improvement of that type and, and the designation of this road as the, as the secondary highway only means um, good things for property that's located on this. And you can see that in evidence. We're, we're next to Pavona Ranch. Pavona Ranch is, is an existing um, country-style development already in. Roads are in. Electricity's in. Uh, majority of the lots are sold. And so you're already starting to see uh, different use categories uh, come into this area. Nice ones, not like the beach, but uh, nice development categories. And all of this, uh, again, is going to spur uh, value increase in, in property in this area. I hope that answers the question, James. That's great. Thank you for that, Tim. Um, the, the next question that we have is, will each lot be serviced? And, and then I, I just picked out a further question down, so I'll combine these two together. So will each lot be serviced, and when will the services be in? Can I put that one to you, Tim? Sure, James. Um, once we're um, you know, past our closing, we have uh, um, contractually 18 months to put in all the services. The answer simply is yes, the lots will all be serviced. Uh, the services are um, e electrical service, uh, water. Water, in this case, is coming from our own uh, water distribution system. We have a lot of water on the property. Um, and we're uh, now into a permitting phase on this uh, as, as a land condominium. So we'll be uh, controlling and distributing our, our own water in Nature Walk, which is a great thing. Um, other services, obviously, road access, and uh, and then um, I should mention uh, there's uh, cable vision not too far away or a cable TV. Uh, there's a phone system. Phone system also carries DSL here in Costa Rica, 
and so uh, your internet will be provided for through your through the phone system. You can also get phone system through satellite, which is readily available here, your own individual satellite system. And finally, I just mentioned that we have uh, excellent um, uh, mobile phone service at, already at Nature Walk. So your cell phones uh, will, will carry signal right from Nature Walk. And uh, Costa Rica is now equipped with the latest G3 service. And so if you're inclined to get data over your phone, you can also get that at Nature Walk. Great. Thank you for that, Tim. Um, we have a question in here, how much teak will be produced? Um, uh, the um, the we're currently forecasting that uh, the teak yield from Nature Walk will be about 280 cubic meters of usable teak per hectare. Now, the offcuts of teak uh, also will have a value, but in our projections, we tend to value those at zero. Um, and again, in the milling process, there is some loss of teak. But in fact, of course, the milling of teak, because it's so valuable, is an efficient process. Um, you, you tend to waste as little teak as you possibly can because it is so valuable. And those offcuts in the milling process also do have a value in, in furniture uh, production and artisan furniture production. Um, and uh, you, of course, as an investor, will benefit not only from the mill teak uh, planks that you, you generate, but of course you'll benefit from the offcuts as well. But for our projections, we value those at zero. So 280 cubic meters per hectare. So for a thousand, uh, cubi uh, a thousand square meter lot, uh, that would be 28 cubic meters of teak. And there is a further one down here, what is the current price of teak? And uh, the current price of teak, of milled teak, is uh, 1250 US dollars per cubic meter in Costa Rica, 1750 US dollars per cubic meter in the United States. Now, one thing I should make clear is that there is a big difference, a big gap between the price of milled teak and the price of teak logs. Teak logs are the basic agricultural commodity, and of course, milling the teak adds significant extra value to the teak. And to put that in perspective, a cubic meter of, of teak log uh, in Costa Rica is currently between about 350 and 500 US dollars per cubic meter for a teak log. That same uh, cubic meter, once it's milled, is about 1,250 US dollars, so a big jump. And that same cubic meter in the United States is $1,750 a cubic meter. And I can tell you that it doesn't cost $500 to get a, um, a cubic meter of teak from Costa Rica to, to the USA. Uh, this is one of the very attractive things about Nature Walk, is, this, is the fact that PRG are involved in timber home construction and have a teak milling arm. That ensures that you as an investor in Nature Walk will have access to that teak milling capability, which means that you will benefit from the added value of selling milled teak rather than just plain teak logs. And that's a process that wins for everybody. It's a process that wins for you as the investor, but of course it wins for PRG too, because PRG have the supply of teak that they require, and of course they, they're not required to deal with um, middlemen and, and agents uh, charging additional fees. They're di dealing directly with the seller of the teak, who is you, the investor, and that process then becomes a win-win-win all the way along. And it's a very important feature of Nature Walk, extremely important. Uh, look at the difference between the value of a teak log and a milled cubic meter of teak. Uh, 350 to 500 US dollars, 1250 dollars, a very large difference. Okay, I'm very conscious of the fact that we have a run over. I do see some other questions there, and uh, we, I will uh, email, uh, I will get some of the staff here to email uh, the answers to the, to the various people. Uh, remember those uh, launch offer lots. Um, there are three launch offer lots remaining there, priced at 50% of the retail pricing of the rest of the estate. They come with the addition and the added advantage of a 10% dividend per year for three years. Uh, they are spectacularly located lots. The returns are equally uh, attractive. And if you are interested, I strongly advise you to send an email to info at CostaRicaInvest.ie and register your interest. If the opportunity is not for you, but you feel it might be for a friend or a colleague, please don't hesitate to put them in contact us and we'd be delighted to speak with them. And remember, 
there are always investment opportunities and there is always more land that can be invested in, but it will not be this land. This land presents a spectacular investment opportunity. It has all the local location issues are correct and the general demographics are excellent. It represents a great opportunity. So, Tim, thank you very much for attending, and thank you very much, everybody, uh, for attending our webinar today. I do hope you found it of use, and thank, thank you if you're celebrating the Christmas and holiday and New Year period. Thank you for taking time out of your, your busy week uh, to join us on this webinar. Thank <laughs> you.